This is Mac Voices TV. Mac Voices TV is brought to you by Drobo. Hard drives fill up and wear out. A single hard drive failure can lose your data. Not with Drobo. Drobo provides the best data storage experience ever. For tips on using Drobo in your home or office, visit drobo.com slash tips and facts. Hi, I'm Chuck Joyner, and this is Mac Voices TV at Macworld 2011 in San Francisco. We are in the Code Weavers booth, believe it or not, talking to John Parshall, the COO of Code Weavers. Hello. John, I don't even know what to say. Um, my wife is fairly speechless, too, so you're not alone in that regard. <laughs> this, this is a pretty impressive promotion. We have Captain Jack behind us. I've got Fred Flintstone over here and a young lady that's dressed in pink. Princess Peach, yes. Princess Peach. Our lovely cohort in crime, Jana. Okay. That's that's interesting. This is a this is an outstanding promotion because you're getting a lot of attention. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate it. We're having fun with it. Uh, you know, the CEO came down to us is like, okay, this is the version 10 release of crossover, and we can't just put it out there with the name of 10. So we're like, okay, we need a new code name. What's it going to be? And we came up with impersonator because that's kind of the shtick. You know, we let you put on the applications. You know, so you're sort of like trading costumes. So that's what we do. Tell us about Impersonator. Uh, th this, when I read the press release on this, I thought this is really intriguing uh, for a couple reasons, but I'll let you tell folks what it is first. Sure. I mean, basically, we let you run your Windows applications on a Mac, but you don't need a Windows operating system license to do it. So we're sort of like some of the other machine uh, emulator solutions that are out there, but different because you don't need the OS license. The cool thing about Impersonator, this particular release, is that we have a new technology called CrossTie, which is basically a one-click installer. So you can go out to our website into our compatibility database, find an application that you want to run, click on the orange install button, and we download a little installation recipe to cross over. It fires up the installer, and you know, boom, you've got your application on your on your Mac within minutes. So I mean, this is pretty impressive because first of all, this takes uh, emulation down a notch as far as pricing, because I no longer have to buy that Windows license. That's exactly right. Yeah, and that's a huge cost savings. You're not having to shell out the 200 bucks or whatever for a copy of Windows. And if you're running an application like IE or Outlook, you also don't have to shell out for the copy of virus protection, which you ought to have if you're running on another, you know, an actual copy of Windows. Um, with our solution, yeah, excuse, excuse the hair there. Um, with our solution, you're not exposed to viruses. So yeah, cost savings in that regard. You also get a performance uh, benefit because unlike you know, machine emulation, um, you're only running one operating system, OS 10. So you're not paying a double overhead in terms of RAM and CPU and that sort of thing. You, you read ahead on the script because I did want to ask you about virus exposure. Since I'm not running Windows, I don't have the hooks in there for a virus to get a hold of? That's exactly right. Yeah, the, the Windows virus would come in and it would start issuing Windows systems calls to Unix, and Unix is like, Quasta, you know, what are you trying to say to me? So yeah, viruses don't run under our product. Are there any are there any limitations with using impersonator? And I mean by that, you know, what I can run and can't run. Yeah, absolutely, and and we try to be very upfront about that. It, it's definitely a try before you buy kind of product. We run thousands of Windows applications, but we don't run all of them. And you know, some of them run absolutely flawlessly. Others run you know so so, and others just don't run at all. So we very much want to make sure that people get out to our website, to download the trial version, use it on the applications that they want to run, see if it works for them. If it does. You've got a great, lightweight, low-cost solution for you that doesn't expose you to viruses and saves you a lot of money. You mentioned Explorer and Outlook. Those are pretty obvious things that people do want to run. How about uh, the Office Suite, um, some of the, the more common databases, things that we think of when we think of Windows, right. and we don't like to think of Windows. Mac Voices much. TV is right. part of the Mac well, Voices Group Outlook and a member of Mac Level 10. Product day in and day out. So the whole Office 2007 suite is, is very much in our sweet spot. Um, various versions of Access will also work. Internet Explorer 6 and 7 work quite well. 8, not as well, to be honest with you. Um, so, yeah, the, what you would think of as kind of the big hitter, the bread and butter applications, yes, we have pretty good coverage over that space. But what we're finding is, is happening is a lot of Mac users out there have got one or two applications that we may not even know of. It could be their genealogy program or their knitting program or, or heaven knows what. A lot of those applications run great you know, just right out of the box. And so that's why we built this whole compatibility database that's got all these applications in them, because then people can go out and try out those, those sort of lesser known applications, which may be the, the key for their happiness in, in Mac land, if you will. 
without getting terribly technical, can you give me an idea of just, I mean, what we're doing here? Because if I start up a, a virtual machine program, it's it's chewing up cycles. It's taking some of the power of my Mac and maintaining that in the background, even if I'm not doing anything. What is Impersonator doing when I, when I launch Explorer and when I haven't launched Explorer? We're based on an open source technology called Wine which is a re-implementation of the Windows 32 API. And in layperson's terms, what's happening is the application is sitting up here and it's making system calls constantly. It's asking for, you know, repaint my screen, give me a dialog box, I need to talk to a printer, blah, blah, blah. We then are the API. We turn around and talk to OS X and we say, give Bubba here a dialog box. And so the application is running, it's getting its needs met, as far as it knows, it's running on top of Windows. It's none the wiser. So we're spoofing the Windows application into thinking it's running on top of Windows when it's actually not. It's OS X that is meeting all of those system needs. And so you're, if I'm not using Impersonator to impersonate something, or impersonate Windows, I guess, nothing's happening, and, nothing's happening and I'm, I have no overhead. Yeah, that's right. There's no overhead. Very nice. Until, until you invoke the program, yeah, Impersonator isn't running. And then even when that is going on, we figure our typical overhead is only like two or three megabytes uh, worth of RAM per application. So in essence, we are only consuming the RAM that the native application would consume in any case. I have startup items that are bigger than that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, pricing. $39.95 for the standard version. Uh, the pro version, which has got some bells and whistles and a longer support period is $69.95. Uh, and is is it released and out in the wild? Yes, it's out and out in the wild. It was released as of this morning, so you can go and get the the trial right now or the software right now off of our website. And the website is www.codeweavers.com. John, thank you very much, and congratulations. This is in a world that's a little crazy. This is a unique promotion. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, we're having a good time with it. So, and wish me luck, you know, making up with my wife when I get back home to Minneapolis. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Folks, uh, <laughs> I, I can't can't do this one straight. I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices TV at MacWorld 2010. If he tries to kiss me, I'll kill him. More <laughs> soon. Thanks for watching. <laughs>